Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part seven of the ultimate guide for new players for scum in 2024. And yeah, I'm going to do this quite... I'm going to try and make this video as short as I can, guys. Of course, you know, we all know that that doesn't always go according to plan. But yes, today we're looking at loot where there are sentries, okay? So the three points that I want to look at today is the C2 bunker, the prison, and the airfield, okay? Two very, very nice places close to one another. You can include the, the dam, if you want to include the dam as well. I think the dam is quite straightforward. There's basically just one sentry to look out for. But we'll cut, we'll, we will cover all three, all four spots. And I'm just going to show you a nice method to do this. Okay, I don't like logging. Like my exhaustion is fine for now. We are going to play. So I'm just going to hide inside here. Okay, I'm going to... Quit to the main menu. I'm going to press Control D. But you will have to do, I think, yeah, I, you will have to do this in single player if you're not the owner of the server or you're not the admin of the server, okay? Because I'm the owner, we're just going to do this very, very quickly. But you can do this in single player. So when you play in single player, you can go Control D. And then just enter your single player character um, in drone mode. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So we're going to continue in drone mode. So we should spawn exactly where we are. And we're just going to go through some sentry training. Um, you know, some basics and then the roots. Now, scummap.com had roots. I was struggling to find them, but I think visually looking at it will be a bit easier than just explaining it. So when you're in drone mode, you can press X to not be visible. Like, no one can see me now. If I press X, then somebody can see me and they can hear me. And of course, I've got a light, okay? And if people can see me like this, I can't go through things. Okay, so I can't go through a wall, but if I go invisible, I can go through anything. Okay, visible can't go through anything, invisible can go through anything, and then people can't see me. Then I can press H to remove the HUD, okay, but I don't get night vision without the HUD, so I have to put the HUD on and then I can put night vision on or night vision off, okay, if I want to see at night. But without the HUD, I can't activate and deactivate night vision. Okay? So, um, you guys can see there's still puppets around me. Okay? In drone mode, I can still go around. Okay? I can still see the puppets. And according to me, I must be able to see the loot as well. Although it doesn't look like it at the moment. It doesn't look like the loot is spawning in for me. Okay, there, there, there's loot. Okay, so there is still loot spawning in the open for me. Yeah, there's a pot. Okay, so the loot is still spawning in for me. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the first point of interest, which is the C2 bunker. Okay. So I'm just going to look which way I'm looking. Okay, there we go. I'm going to press space bar to increase the height. Okay. And then, of course, mouse wheel to increase the speed or decrease the speed. There's the trader. And here is the C2 bunker. Okay. So when we're looking at the C2 bunker, we've got two areas that we can enter in from. Okay. Okay. First area is roughly here. This is where I enter from. So as soon as this um, sentry turns around, I jog and I go in here. Okay. And it gives you quite a bit of time to jog. I think you can make it if you jog. Okay. But then at some point he's going to turn around. And his route is quite, his route is quite short. If you don't want to run like that, then another thing you can do is come in from here. 
Okay? You will come in from here when he's not looking at you. Crawl. Okay? Crawl down here. And then as soon as, soon as he turns around, you can just ju jump down here. Okay? You can just jump. So as soon as he turns around, you're like jumping over this wall now. And then you're coming here and you're opening the door. You know, then you should have enough time to like get through the door. Okay? Um, this, ta this takes quite a bit of timing. Okay, but there's only one sentry to deal with. And that sentry there doesn't really bother me that much. But sometimes when I try and come through here, that sentry does see me. I don't know if it's got higher ground or whatever the case may be. But this sentry used to be my favorite. I think you can, you can do the same here. But again, like, this sentry can't really see you when you're doing that maneuver up there. But when you're doing this maneuver, when you, where you, like, want to hide behind the rocks and then go down, I think that sentry could be able to see you and stuff it up for you. But my usual route is just staying, you know, staying low ground here and then, you know, standing in this bush, coming in this bush. Like, literally crouching, because you don't want a piece of your body to be sticking out. So I literally crouch in this bush. Until he turns away from me. Okay, so I'll crouch in this bush, and now, now I'll just be walking. And I'll follow this, this wall, and open this door. Because funny enough, when you're against this wall, he can't really see you. Okay? When you're against this wall, it, it, it doesn't cover his, poor, his, his, his angle until he turns around there. Okay? So, yeah. Like, he's going to see you at some point, but you can always use the walls to try and stay away out of their 180 degree arc. And what do I mean by 180 degree arc? This line. This is what he can see. Okay? Front, left, and right. He can't see behind left, behind right. Okay? So if we, if we draw a circle around him, if we draw a, a 360 degree circle around him, he can only see the, the front of the circle. The front half of the circle. Okay? He can only see directly right of him, directly left, everything in front of him. He can't see anything behind him, okay? So that's very, very important. Okay. So that's basically that. And then we're going to the prison, okay? The prison isn't very hard to get to. Of course, the C2 bunker is directly um, east from the from the trader. And then the, the prison is, the, you know, like south west of the trader and again here yeah, you've got you've got a few options okay big thing that you have to like if you want to come through the entrance that sentry is a big deal okay but the sentry walks up to here so basically when the sentry turns around you want to be taking this gap okay and then the other sentry that you have to worry about is the sentry but he also takes a very very long route okay so um, a very, very nice thing to do is to come into the entrance. Okay, I just want to slow down the drone here. Come into the entrance. Okay, come up here. Because when you're here, then those sentries won't really see you. Okay? So then you can come up these stairs if you want to be tactical. And you can go directly from here. Okay, directly from here. You can literally come through the gate, run all the way up here. Okay? And then once the sentry turns around, this guy's just going to walk up to here. Once he turns around, you're going to go around here. Going to watch out for that sentry. You can hide between these two. You can hide between these two camouflage um, loot spots, okay? To cover yourself from both angles. And then, again, you don't have to worry about this guy. You have jogged in here at your own pace. So you come in, you come and crouch down here. And as soon as he's out of the 180 degree arc, okay, you're still not in his arc. You can just 
you can just jo jog around here okay and then you can loot this place this place is really really good it's got a vehicle repair shop over here you can come through here there's like vehicle you know like vehicle parts over there but what i usually do is i come down here okay come through this passageway over here and then this these rooms used to have good loot but they don't have good loot anymore so all i go for is the armory okay there's military loot that you will find here there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen lockers in here and other stuff that you can loot okay there's a control room in here like there's some there's some boots there for us okay there's a me little medical room and then if you if you go right through here there's like a workshop over here you know that can give you so a lot of good variety of loot in here guys you know you can search this entire place it's not that complicated to get inside and then if we have to go look at the last spot which is not the last spot but another spot that's very very close um like you know there's there's safe ways to get down here you just have to go wide okay you have to go quite wide um don't like i've done this before guys but if you don't like getting hurt or dying don't don't try and go down here where it's very very steep okay take the long route okay take the longest route you can and come down here okay try and take a route where you're not going to slip and die okay so just try you know just if I, I have to give you a marker then this is a good marker okay come down until you see this passageway over here okay and then you can come down this passageway and you'll be quite fine okay um entering from this side is not that bad okay it's not that hard but you got you have got the sentry to deal with okay so the sentry walks up and down so once the sentry walks back then you can you're gonna walk through here and get a place to hide from it but you have to take this sentry into account as well that's why I would personally just skip all of that, okay? If you are forced to come around this side, then you basically just, you can either jump, you know, you can either go from one to the other and walk all the way over, or you can just deal with the one sentry up there and cross over like this, jumping through like this. But I like coming in from this side okay because then you just take then you're just taking the stairs okay you're just taking the stairs you crouching down here so that he can't see you and then once he turns around you just you just jog up here okay you've got the you've got these this military loot you've got this loot inside here around the back here he walks back for a long while so you've got a gap to do stuff you've got all this loot here you've got all the loot on the roof there's a ladder back there that you can get you've got all this loot inside here you've got nine lockers inside of here as well three six nine okay that is all i usually loot you know the roof the military loot back here the loot on the roof that you know um there is low hanging fruit here you can loot this you can loot each and every one of these of these little rooms i just don't find it's worth the risk personally there's a lot of these rooms if you want to go for them go for them i just personally don't feel it's worth the risk okay that's my personal opinion and um, there's military loot here as well this might be you know because you're gonna climb up here you can just as well come and try and loot this but if we're looking at little places like this i mean there's a bunch of them here without you really taking a risk okay you know there's like there's two of the white little storage units there's four of the brown storage units 
Okay, and there's another storage unit down there without taking major risks. I don't really ever climb this place, okay? It's very rare that I see something worthwhile up here. Like, here's a pair of glasses, okay? But, I mean, people can shoot you up here. Sentries can shoot you up here. So, the loot really has to be worth it. But I can still come and see in drone mode. I can still come and look like, is it worth it? For me to for me to come up here okay if you really 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 want to see if it's worth it to climb up stuff and get to the top of something go to single player make your loot multiplier you know go to single player and um, go to server settings and make your loot multiplier like you know make your your spawner your loot multiplier like 10 okay make the loot multiplier 10 and then come and see, you know, now that the loot multiplier is 10, whatever, if anything was going to spawn here, it will spawn here now, okay? Because checking, checking spawn place like this on a low loot multiplier is not going to help you a lot because there could be a gun spawn there and there could be a gun spawn there and there could be a gun spawn there. But because you're on vanilla loot, it might just be that the one time you're checking it, it isn't there. But if you go to single player and you set the loot multiplier to 10, you will figure out where certain things can spawn. And it will save you a lot of time that you don't have to waste. Okay? And then if you see a gun here at times 10 loot, you know it can spawn there. And then you can write these specific locations down of where you can find good loot. And then go check those spots every now and then and see how, you know, what the rate is actually like on vanilla settings but finding this the spawn point you know i'd say put the loot multiplier on 10 just to make sure you can find the 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 spawn point um if you want to be sure you know put it on 20 put it on times 20 because i think like the rarest loot has maybe a five percent chance to spawn or something like that if you think if you think you want to find every single thing that can ever spawn outside and you think the rarest it can go is one percent make the loot multiplier i don't know how far can it go i don't know how far can the loot multiplier go you can set it to max if you want to it can only go up to 10. you can probably set it higher um you know, in the in the server host settings, but I think ten is fine, guys. I think ten is fine. Okay, if you do regular, if you do regular checks, you know, if you come and check these places regularly, it will be it will be okay. So yeah, that's the routes that I take, and it's the biggest training with sentries is the airfield. Now, this is one of my favorite spots in the game. Um, it's taught me a lot. Um, yeah, if I have to think about places where I've learned a lot about the game, I'd say the B2 airfield is probably one of the best spots for me. Um, the B2 airfield has taught me a lot about the sentry's ranges, you know, like at what range they can see you, um, what affects their vision, Okay, um, what, how, their, how their zones work that they are programmed to protect. Um, I hardly ever come in from this spot because you guys can just see, if you come in from this angle, if you come into the airfield from this angle, you've basically got one, two, three, four. There's a, there's a sentry, there's a sentry, there's a sentry, there's a sentry. So if you run through here, you can potentially be shot at by four sentries. Okay not a good idea not a good idea at all okay if you come through here if you run through here okay that sentry there has got a turnaround point he's going to turn left because what this sentry basically does is he just walks in a in a in a in a square okay walks there walks there walks there just in a square. That's what the sentry does. Okay? 
And then the same tree has got like a year, 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 year. Okay. And then that same tree over there has got like a come to year, come to year, come to there, almost like a square. Just a little bit of a of a weirder square. This century has got a pure square, you know, where it walks down. Okay, not perfectly down, but he comes here, he walks there. Okay, also does a square. And then this this century, this century's route is one that I've learned over time, you know, because he's gonna walk to year, then he's gonna walk to year, okay. Then he's going to walk here, and then he's going to walk there, and there, and there, and there. Okay, so if you if you study this guy, it's very easy to creep up behind him. A lot of you guys will see in stream that I'm walking behind him. Because walking behind him isn't that difficult to figure out. And because this guy only comes here now and then, I feel... I feel this route, coming down this road, coming in year through year is quite safe because you're far enough away from that sentry to not aggro it. Yes, you're in the open if there's players. You know, if there's players, then you're in the open. So, me personally, I like going through year. Okay? Although I do feel it gives me a bit of a short route because I'm close to that sentry. So, I'd say the optimal path, because that guy's not going to be there for long, and he's not going to be looking this way for long. He's going to be looking this way, that way, and that way for a very long time. And even when he walks this way, he's very far from the zone. So I feel like this is almost a fantastic area to come in and just spec out what all the sentries are doing. Okay. And the reason that I've learned to like this guy, I know if I'm behind this guy, I know that I have to just be on this side. Okay. Because you're gonna walk that way. I think I, I don't think I, I I don't think I caught him early enough. But he's gonna walk this way, up to this corner, and then he's gonna walk that way. But when he's walking this way, you, you can literally just be behind him because he walks this way and then he walks this way first, and then he walks that way. Okay. So when I follow him, as soon as he turns here. And I follow him. I know that I can be on this side of him the first time he, he changes his route. And then I know I have to be on this side of him when he changes his route. And then I know the, the walk that he's going to take there takes very long. So while he's walking there, I can comfortably go for this place. Or I can just stay behind him and then I can just loot everything here. But look at this. There's one, two, three centuries here, guys. Like, this is where I used to come in. There's so much cover for people to kill you here. Like, this is such a common route to come in here. And the sentries can always see you from the fences, or they can see you through the fences. You're too close to them. So, any anywhere, anywhere on this fence, you can be shot at from the, by the sentries. And you can give your position away. Okay, and then you've got three sentries to deal with a lot of the time because while he's walking away, this guy is covering. Like if you want to, if you want to run from here to there, then while that guy is give, is looking away, this guy is looking at it. Okay, and then as this guy started to look away, this guy's coming back. As this guy starting to look away which doesn't happen a lot a lot okay so if it was just that century and it was just that century this route would have been really really quick for me but this guy really really complicates entering the space okay because his route is very 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 short and like i say he's looking away now but now that guy's covering it now that he's looking away, and I can run through here, this guy is covering this area again, okay? So, in my personal, personal, personal opinion, if you want to run in here, you you get as close to this, you, you solo this guy, okay? You deal solely with this guy.
okay? And when this guy's looking away, then you enter in here, or you enter in there, or you enter in there, or you, or you enter in here. Because he's going to walk away from you for quite a long time. That guy in the middle is way too busy for me. Way, way, way too busy for me. Okay, this guy is going to walk away for a very long time, giving me time to go into that building, those buildings, that building. If I go into those buildings, I just have to look out for that one sentry. If I go into that building, I just have to look out for that sentry. But if I'm going to this building, it's basically just this, this sentry that I have to look out for. You know, and this guy, the route, the route is just very, very long. And the reason I like this place, guys, is it's got um, two vehicle repair shops, okay? And it's got, that's five, it's got 11 half moons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 11, half moons, two hangars where you, each of them can have a plane, each of them has military loot, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, places where you can find, you know, um, building equipment or general, general um, loot, okay, you can loot this place, um, the tower, you can find loot there, you can, the, you can find loot and clothing inside the main, like, airport area, you, there's scrap metal there, every one of those cars are scrap metal, okay, and it's just, it's just a very, very good training ground for me, and the two routes that I that I take in here is basically this route where I stand on this yellow line here, okay? And when I see that guy, that guy like going that way, I'd like to change my route a little bit here because if I wait for that sentry, I feel like I'm cutting it too close because there's puppets here and everything. Like you're going to have puppets when you're walking through here. So I'd like to get a really good angle on him. So yeah, I, I feel I feel way better with this with this route here because I've got visuals of him. I've got a visual of him. Okay, so I actually want to try out this route and see how it works. But my favorite route at the moment, because I know that this guy walks in a square, my favorite route by a mile is basically coming in coming in through here. Okay. Because I know this guy's going to walk this way and then that way and then that way. So I like it when he gets to this corner. And then when he turns away from me, I just follow him. Okay. I just walk behind him. And then I know he's going to walk this way. By the time he's walking this way, that guy isn't there. Then I can enter here. I can go enter there. But I usually go for the half moons. Okay. And then I deal with whatever's going on inside here. Okay. So... I hope this helps you guys. Very, very important about the sentries is their vision. Your biggest, your biggest enemy with the sentry is the vision. Okay, so if, again, make a big circle around the sentry, cut it in half. The sentry can see everything in the, in the front 180 degrees around it. You can make the circle very big. Like the circle in front of a sentry is probably like in 100 meters, 100 meters wide. Okay. But it can't see anything at the 180, you know, around, uh, behind it. It can't see anything at a 180 degree angle around it. So if you, if you make a 100 meter circle around a sentry, okay, you can't enter the, the front half of the circle. Otherwise, it's going to see you. But you can't do anything in the back half of its circle. And then when it comes to sound, depending on your st stealth skill, I would never run close to a sentry, except if I have advanced stealth, and then I'd still keep my distance, you know? Like, if I was running behind it, I won't get very, very close to it. I can jog extremely close to it with advanced stealth, but to make it as simple as possible, guys, you need to stay, you need to stay quite a distance behind it, like this, you know, like a 10 or 20 meter distance behind it, and you, you want to jog. Okay, if you want to be safe, you want to jog. The only time I run is if I'm, if things are going to get hairy for me. Like, I want to run in here and I don't want to wait for him. Okay, then I'll sprint to try and get in here. But there's safer ways to do that. I could rather just wait in this bush. 
Okay, I could rather wait in the bush and instead of sprinting to that thing until he's not looking at me and now I can jog. Okay, now I can jog. I have to look out for that guy. Okay, but I think I'm far enough away from him, but I can jog now, open the door and get in here before that guy turns. Okay, maybe he'll see me, maybe he won't, but it's very, very far. I don't fear a sentry when it's shooting me from very, very far. Okay, the dead, the closer you are to a sentry, sentry, the deadlier it becomes. Okay, so if you're 150 meters away from the sentry and it starts shooting at you, you you can just be like, ah, oh, what the heck? Okay, but if you're like in this range, you need to get out of dodge or get an EMP grenade to to cancel it. Okay, so I'm gonna run to the airfield. It's one of my favorite areas. Um, and then loot it quickly for you guys and show you guys what the experience is like. <clears throat> even, even I forgot that I can't just run into a point of interest immediately. So, yeah, we're going to sell a few things that we got from, you know, just normal looting. The chainsaw, we're going to bury in our chest that we hid, our hidden chest, okay? We're going to put the chainsaw in there. We're going to put the toolbox in there as well. Always nice to have a spare toolbox on you. Um, it's going to quickly see what these locks are worth. I already put a lock on the chest. I always put a lock on anything that, had, that can be stolen. Um, just to give, you know, just to help the admins find um, people that could be busy with, you know, ESP cheats or something like that. So, yeah, uh, putting locks on everything that could be stolen is very, very good to help the admin team. Okay, so the locks are 240. So I always compare it to, like, how difficult is it to open a lock like this for a standard player you know, to how much we can sell it for. I don't really... The safety feature of an iron lock isn't really that high, so I'd rather want silver locks or gold locks. Having a lock on all your chests and all your doors and your base is good, but we're not so, looking at a base just yet. And we can focus on locks at a different part in the game, okay? So we're rather going to sell it now that mask would have been 160 if it was fully repaired, which isn't too bad. Um, and then other than that, nothing that really pops out to me. I think the rest of the things I would just like to stash away. The chainsaws are 1,000, but the chainsaw is not worth it, guys. Trust me. So You don't want to sell a it. chainsaw, Okay. So just to keep it safe, we're going to take it, put it, when we go to sell, we go directly to the bank. Okay, get the money there into the bank. And then I'm just going to bury the loot, and I'm going to give you guys a crash course at night. And whether you believe it or not, dealing with sentries at night is not that bad. It's, it actually helps the learning experience. Okay, guys, I'm just going to... I don't know if I want to activate the filter for you guys. Um, so, yeah, probably not going to activate the filter for you. The chest has been stolen, okay? Um, my chest was here inside of a tree. Uh, so, it has been taken. Luckily, it had a lock on it. So, whenever you feel it was... It's quite difficult. Like, this is not difficult. This is close to the trader, Okay. But I'm still going to make a note of it, okay? So whenever you feel it was quite difficult for someone to have found your chest, but, like, this is not difficult, but you can still mention it. So you can still report it to admin. Look here, guys, I don't think it was very difficult finding this chest, but can we just see who um, tries to unlock it because that player might be a problem, okay? So... If the player doesn't have a natural, you know, if the player isn't isn't being picked up by the system, 
as being the luckiest man on, on the planet, just finding chests everywhere, then it's fine. If this chest was just found by mistake or per luck, that's fine. But it's good to report it when you feel, you know, it was quite unlikely for your chest to have been found so that we can see who unlocks your chest and so that we can keep a record of him and so that if we, if he activates any of our alert systems or, you know, he stands out, if you bury something at the trader does, it despawn. Well, I didn't bury it. <laughs> but in any case, guys, yeah. So just understand that um, I am gonna test. I'm, I'm gonna test the safe safe zone on my test server. I'm gonna see if you loot, leave something in the safe zone on my test server, how long it will stay for. Okay. Um, the thing is, I didn't bury the chest. I just left the chest inside of a tree. Okay, so I didn't bury it. But in any case, you guys get the point, okay? If you feel a chest has been found, easily report it, and um, that we can try and fix it, okay? And this, guy is, this guy's chest disappeared inside the safe zone, so I'm going to ask him if he locked it, and if he did, did lock it, and the same person found his chest and my chest, you know, then that's that's quite clear. We can get rid of the player, okay? We can get rid of the clan, and we can keep the server secure. Although, in this case, both of us did it in the safe zone, so we have to figure out, you know, is it someone who's finding chest very easily, or is it the fact that we left our chest in the safe zone, okay? So, um, I'll see you guys at the prison. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. At the prison, I did put away a lot of the loot, and this time I buried it, doing tests while I'm doing guides. So yeah, um, it's dark, but it's really, really good to see the sentry's lights. Okay, so that sentry is walking that way. I think I'm going to take the gap. It looks very nice where you can see all the lights, see where the sentry is looking at. So that sentry is going to turn around now. I'm going to take a bit of a risk here. I'm definitely going to take a bit of a risk here. But I'm going to go for it. Open up here. Run this way. See if the sentry sees me. No, he's not seeing me. So now I can go up here. The sentry's on its way here. So I'm just going to stay out of his vision. If I can't see it, if I can't see it in first person, it can't see me. Okay? Like you guys say, I'm quite safe from that sentry over there. And as soon as this sentry turns around, I'm gonna be I'm gonna feel quite safe. Can jump over here quite safely. Take out my bow or my gun, whatever I want. Jog comfortably. That guy saw me, which is dangerous. But I can just come behind here. There's nothing he can do to me. There's nothing he can do to me. He can't get to me. Okay? So I'm going to hide behind this. I am aware of that sentry. Could have peeked a little bit more. You know, could have peeked around the corner a little bit more to understand where the sentry is looking at. Now I'm going to take, now I'm going to go between these two, like I told you guys, to protect myself from him and to protect myself from him. But he's not coming. So I'm just going to take the gap here and jog. There's a lot of puppets that are dead here. I hope the sentry killed all of them. But if the sentry didn't kill all of them, it could be a player. Like I say, a lot of military loot here. Vehicle repair shop in here. Okay. A lot of loot lying around here. 
really hope it's the sentry that killed those puppets. But the thing is, I didn't hear the puppets. So I am I am on alert at the moment. And I am looting. If this if like that sentry could have given my position away. So someone might know that I'm here. Okay. So let's just make this short. We can search, you guys can search all the military loot. That's not why I'm here. Okay, there's the puppet. Almost thought that was a player. Not sure if those are puppets, but I'm ready to fight. Always trying to be ready to, to fight. I can't see much, just like you guys can't see much. But yeah, now that I've explained to you guys, you know, that the lighting with the sentries work, I, I at least want you guys to see something. So there, I'm just putting the filter on so that you guys can see something. But we're going right to the danger zone, okay? We're going straight for the danger zone. Okay. No, these aren't unlocked. Okay, so I'm gonna pick six lockers to open up here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna pick these three and those three. Actually, no, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do five. I'm just gonna do five here. Okay. Now uh, keeping the bobby pins for a cargo drop is way way better guys because a cargo drop is guaranteed loot and on a 0 0.7 loot server like i am now i don't really like opening lockers but we could get lucky okay we could get lucky but the lower the loot settings are of a server the less valuable the lockers become okay because the lockers are connected to the loot tables where a kill box and a cargo drop is not connected to a loot table. You won't find more loot in a kill box if you're on a times 10 loot multiplier. You won't find more loot in a cargo drop if you're on a times 10 loot multiplier. But you will find a lot more lockers with loot in them depending on the multiplier, okay? But again, I'm going to take a risk because at least if I find something... It should be military loot, where with a cargo drop, it's not always guaranteed to be military loot. Okay, so we're going to do six lockers, see what we can get. If you struggle with lock picking at all, you can always take the gloves off. If there's yellow, it means that the gloves are affecting the lock picking. Okay, so see what's in this one. Nothing. Now you see there's no, you know, there's no yellow, so we're lock picking as best as we can now we find a helmet not the best but not the worst either nothing and that's why I don't like like on meat grinder like lock picking 
Lock picking lock is on the meat grinder, which has only got a 0 0.5 loot multiplier, is absolutely insane. Like on the meat grinder, the like the worse the loot, the loot multiplier gets, the more you have to save up those screwdrivers to use them effectively. Okay? But I mean getting six screwdrivers again is not gonna be the end of the world. We could have found guns and other things, but there's still a lot of things to loot here. Okay. We could still get lucky, like there's nine more ammo. So even if you don't lockpick, you can get you can still get lucky. Like if I had a crowbar, could have still crowbarred a few of these lockers. But I mean that 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 the route that I show you guys. It's very, very safe. Okay? It's very, very, very safe. I'm actually going to keep this for a backup. In case I die. No, I'm actually going to keep that for a backup. I like that. I like the police. I would like to get the full police kit. Like the police, you know, like this is a police tab proof vest. If you guys don't know what I'm saying. Hmm. Can you guys see it already? Why can't I see my quiver? Where the heck is my quiver? There's my quiver. Is this the police one? I don't know if this is the police one. But you, like, it will be cool to get the whole police, the whole police, you know, the whole police outfit. A lot of things does say police on it. I'd like to I'd like to get the entire police outfit. You know, but it looks like we didn't even have armor. So the fact that we have armor now is good. Another magazine. Looks like a puppet knows where we are. That will help for heat. Okay, I think the puppet upstairs is a little bit confused. Check if we can find any bandages in here. Or medication. Bandages or medication. Medication we can sell for money. There, we can sell that. Mm, yeah, whatever. We can sell that not for a lot, but we can still sell it. This whole tab in here. Go through here. Just like I showed you guys in drone mode. Check the slope spot here. There's a toolbox and gunpowder. Now I'm a little bit confused. We're gonna take the toolbox. Come in here. Another workshop area. And as I tell you guys, like dealing with the sentry wasn't difficult. Most of the places your main threat level is gonna be if you run into a player. Okay? But once you understand the sentries, it's not that bad and the reward or learning how to get past the sentries is good, okay? And once you're inside, like, if you just if you just follow the loot route that I'm showing you, and you don't go near windows where the sentries can maybe, you know, can maybe spot you through the windows. If you just focus on things like that, you'll be fine. Um, in the B2 airfield... Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do the C2 bunker in the next video. Then we're gonna do the B B2 airfield, and then we're just gonna finish the series off with a few standard things, you know. But if you apply these rules um, to every place you loot, and you learn the things that I've you know that I've showed you to learn, then it's not gonna be that hard. 
and it's going to be quite rewarding. Are there sentries? Yes. But the fact that I made the effort to get past them quite easily is giving me an advantage over someone who's going to struggle with them. Okay? There might be someone who's going to struggle with them. And I've got the advantage because, yes, I did. You know, the one sentry did see me, but that was by mistake. Okay, that was on purpose. That was by mistake. Just, okay, let's just eat everything here. It's a vitamin blaster. Take the rubber gloves. But yes, guys, once you... There are places that are frustrating with sentries. I'd say the last place that we're going to loot, the B2 airfield, is probably one of them. Okay, probably something that stands out a bit. Why am I getting gloves? Because if I get a key card, then the key card's gonna help me get to get into an abandoned bunker. And in an abandoned bunker, I'm gonna need rubber gloves to do the kill box. And the key kill box is gonna be is gonna give me the most, you know, is gonna give me the most lucrative loot. I remember, guys, we're looking for screwdrivers. Search the puppets. Okay. Search the puppets. And kill them before they call their friends. Always kill them before they call their friends. See? We already got one screwdriver back. No, I don't really care about the arrows anymore. Just, just searching the washing room for some clothing. Can search the washing machines themselves. There's isopropyl alcohol, which is really, 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 really good. Drag that down by mistake. Very, very nice find there. We find garlic. We all know why garlic is good. Okay, but we've got the antibiotics, so we don't really need the garlic right now. But if we didn't buy the antibiotics, that garlic would have been great. Again, we're close to windows now, so we have to be careful. We have to have to be careful because we're close to windows. You know, there we can get water, we can get food. Hoping for like a sewing kit because even as someone who's played the game for a very long time, I dropped my bow. The bow that we found with the silencer on it, I dropped it somewhere. I was triple carrying and drank something or ate something. So even after thousands of hours, I still make those mistakes. Okay. And now again, we're just going to take it slow. We're going to look at what we can see through windows. You know, like, if we think someone's in there, we can always use the roofs. Not that I... I think just to stay inside, guys. That's way, way safer. But now we're going to backtrack. Okay, we're going to backtrack our route to, to get out of here. Okay, just going to go down the stairs. Like, here's the stairs. Again, we could have looted all the stuff inside here, guys. We could have... We could have looted all the place inside here. Yeah? But we're going to take the conservative route. Going to go out just like we came in.
Okay, there's a guy that we have to deal with. Okay, so those guys were clearly looking for us, but they couldn't find us. We're in the little courtyard. Okay, again, we're just going to search quickly for screwdrivers. Be aware of our surroundings. Don't want to get shot in the head by a player. And then we're looking for the light that comes from the sentry. Okay. Like we want, it's nighttime now, so there will be a light where it's coming from. Again, we can search all of this. With no real threat level. Run across here, search this. No real threat level. Oh, they opened that door. Be very, be very, very aware of what doors the, the, the puppets open up, okay? The puppets actually gave away my position there. I actually got, got a heart attack. I thought I thought someone else attracted, attracted the sentries. But we can go in here. Again, we're safe here. Okay, all of these places can give you... You can get some nice, nice lucrative military military loot here okay but you're free to loot the entire place guys i'm just going to show you how to get out now okay so here's the sentry as long as i can't see him in first person he can't see me and now I'm just jogging, keeping my, di you know, keeping my distance. Now I can search this if I want to. I know he's going to walk that way for quite a while. Okay. So if I'm desperate for loot, I can search here. Don't want to stay here too long. I know he's going to turn around. What I mean, I'm, I mean, he's going to turn around at some point. Do I really, really want the pistol? I don't know. Um, I don't know. In any case, I'm going to go through here. Search this. Search this. Search this. Search this. Wait for that sentry to come through. Just going to take my time. Like, I'm safe here. I'm safe. Okay? If someone else comes running up here, I'm going to kill them. If they try and use the spot that I'm using, I'm going to kill them. This protects me because, again, if I can't see him, he can't see me. And this protects me because, again, if I can't see him in third, third person, he can't see me. But I can definitely try and watch when he comes around. Okay? And I can check when this guy comes around. So this guy's coming. You need to be careful of him. And I need to stay out of this guy's, this guy's eye and sight. Okay, now that guy's not a problem anymore. And I can now just back away if I want to, yeah? Like, there's a lot of puppets in there that can see me. And again, I don't want to take too long, yeah? I don't want to take too long. I want to take the gap. Again, just the patience thing. Okay? Just the patience thing going on, yeah? And I think I can risk it, guys. Even if this guy... Like, this guy's probably going to see me, but I think... No, I can't risk it. No, I can't risk it. I can risk it. I can go out here. Oh, so you are forced... You are forced to go out of out like this. Okay, so you are forced to go out like that. And then we're just looking where the other sentry is. He's on his way up. So we don't need to worry about him. And we can get back to... We can get back to the trader. Okay? And we can go bury some of our loot again. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor and click the like button. In the next video, we're going to do a C2... A C2 guide, because the C2 bunker is definitely the most lucrative bunker out of all the normal bunkers. And then we're going to do an airfield, you know, 
so part 8 will be a C2 guide. Part 9 will be a uh, airfield guide. Okay? If you guys enjoyed it, do me a favor, click that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to see if, and you want to learn everything about scum, then click the subscribe button, guys. I'll see you guys later while I'm sprinting to get into the safe zone. Cheers.